Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining. This is the Morning Market Review with myself, Russell Shaw. I'm a Senior Market Specialist at FXCM, and uh, today is Monday, the 3rd of April, and I'm excited to be back after a week off. Uh, thank you very much for joining. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, bring up the uh, disclaimers. Before I do that, let me just highlight my email address, rshaw at fxcm.com. If anybody needs to contact me, that's the address. And let's bring in the high-risk investment warning. I'll keep this on screen for a few moments. Hey, Anna. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, Gurdip saying there's no sound. Uh, just want to double check. Can you guys hear me? Okay. All right. I'll, I'll write him a message. Okay. I'll, I'll write him a message. Just... Um... Let's get through the uh, let's get through the disclaimers. Let's bring up the commentaries disclaimer. All right, just bear with me. I'm just sending him a message. All right, let me send this to Gertie. Okay, cool. And the references uh, here is uh, we'll look at MarketScope, we'll look at TradingView. All righty. Um, all right, I want to show you oil. So oil's jumped. Uh, let's just take a look at this on the daily chart. So it's jumped from zone two. It's jumped all the way into zone one. Look at this gap. There's a big gap here. Uh, the price has to actually catch up. The price here is actually uh, around about 80, 83, right? So um, it's really jumped up here. Um, take a look at the stochastic the stochastics moving towards that 80 if it hits 80 and holds uh then uh, we may have a swing um we may have a swing on our hands uh the question is of course why have we uh gap up here and it's because opec has made a surprise announcement that it is cutting oil production and that was not expected and that's why you get this gap up here and it's cutting by more than a million barrels per day and um, I think that uh, effectively um, starts from May to the end of 2023. Okay, so there is um, a supply cut here. Oil has uh, reacted by jumping uh, from zone two into zone one. A big movement up here. Um, I had a terrific break, Anna. Hey, Gurdip. Okay, nice to have you back. All right, excellent. Um, here is the weekly chart of oil. So we're looking at Brent, okay? Uh, I put in the uh, the peaks and troughs, and you can see that we're still in a downtrend here. We've got a series of low peaks and low troughs. Um, take note of the RSR below 50. When the RSR is below 50, that's on the bearish side of the oscillator when it's above 50 we're on the bullish side so what we're going to have to watch for now is the the rsi you can see it's starting to peak just above um, that 50 and if it holds above that 50 then we want to see if the trend here is going to be broken but the idea here is the trend on a primary basis generally tends to hold um, but there is some sort of fundamental uh, shift here. Uh, politically, it's not popular, Gurdip saying that. I think what's happening here is uh, we've had more of a demand story than a supply story, Gurdip. So there's been this um, theory, thesis, hypothesis that we're heading into a recession or the recession 
um, is here in, uh, in some regards. Uh, the idea is that um, the mark has been coming down, and I think that you can see that the series of lower peaks, lower troughs is really demand driven. And what OPEC is trying to do now is they're trying to support it with uh, with supply. So they've cut down the supply. What's, uh, what you're saying is quite correct. This is going to be very unpopular politically because we still have the inflation story. The fact that uh, that oil was coming down was playing very nicely into the um, the, the, the inflation control paradigm. So we have to watch this now very, very carefully. Uh, the RSI, I think, is going to be the first clue for us. If it sort of hits 50 and drops below, then maybe it's just a, a blip. But so we, there's a few things to watch. The, um, the RSI about 50, then if we drop the daily, uh, does the stochastic make its way to the upper quintile and hold? And if it holds in that upper quintile, we might get a swing. Now, let's just explore this a little bit further, guys. Let's bring up the NASDAQ 100 because the NASDAQ 100 here did have a nice swing. And I want to just use that as an example of um, of the um, of what happens with the swings. You can see here, once we get into that upper quartile and it holds, okay, take a look here. You see how it's it's pushed in? Let's get rid of this, we don't need that. Take a look where we are right now. So we've got a terrific swing going on in NASDAQ at the moment. And where, where is it taking place? It's taking place in that upper quintile. Let's just go back to oil for a moment. I'm just using uh, Brent as the proxy, okay? And you can see that um, there is an idea here of, um, we're moving into the upper quintile here. Now, Anna's asked a brilliant question. Uh, what about the demand, uh, pickup in demand from China? Or has that already happened? I don't I don't think that has necessarily already happened, Anna. Um, the, uh, I'm just actually bringing up my calendar because there was data out of China overnight and it did show a weakening in, um, in, in some of the demand. Uh, let me just bring that up. So uh, I've gone through to, uh, for um, manufacturing. No, I beg your pardon. I'm quite correct. It's out of China. Um, I just uh, popped this here. Uh, the Kaijin came in at 50. It was expected to be at 51.4. It came in under. So, so the mind here perhaps showing some signs of slowing down. Um, and I just want to be very cognizant of that, um, that the, um, I think there is a, an element of untapped uh, demand there. Um, let's just keep an eye on that uh, data coming out and um, uh, see if the demand is able to come back. But by and large, it hasn't had much of an impact on the, uh, on the oil trend as of yet. You can see the oil trend here. Uh, very much a uh, in downtrend. So the idea here is um, is the supply is the supply cut going to change that? Uh, another question that we can bring in here is the demand from China going to come in and push us into a higher peak? Okay. Um, so those are all things that we need to keep an eye on. Um, the questions. Uh, unfortunately, we don't quite have the uh, the answer. Not quite yet. Um, the idea here is, Anna, the, I, I would look at the stochastic. I want to see if the stochastic reaches um, 80 and holds. And if it reaches 80 and holds, I think what we'll do is we'll get the um, Bollinger starting to move in this northeasterly direction. So I don't think we, the, the squeeze here is not quite on. It's, it's tightening perhaps a little bit, but here would be the squeeze. Um, I think the idea here is, do they start moving in this type of a direction? Um, now, so we've had a big movement up, a big movement up, a big gap up. Is it going to hold the RSI? Are we going to get the, uh, are we going to get the stochastic moving into 80? So all of this is, uh, 
what's influencing the market at the moment. Uh, the next step for us would be to go through to the rates to see what's happening on the rate side of things. And I brought up the real rate uh, this morning just to take a look. The real rate actually hasn't moved. Okay, so I'm just looking at the 10-year real rate. Uh, there's no movement there. So the market, the, the bond market hasn't been um, uh, reactive at all. And if we take a look at the two-year yield, so we start looking to see if it's going to affect some sort of monetary policy, that hasn't moved either. Okay, so we're looking at this on the daily. In fact, it's just, just really come down. So the, 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 the yields haven't moved. Um, so I don't think the market is quite... Um, whilst we've seen that huge gap up, I don't think the uh, the bond traders are, are quite as convinced that the supply cut is going to equalize, uh, bring an equilibrium with that uh, with that demand. Let's see if that is what's going to happen. Uh, let's take a look now at the dollar to see how the dollar has reacted because the dollar is a safe haven. The dollar has moved somewhat with the gap here, so let's just bring it up. And you can see that the dollar has moved from zone three, which is our uh, bearish area, and it's, it's just uh, ticked up into zone two. But by and large, all right, we've still got this topping here. Yeah. This RS, the right shoulder, uh, I'm still leaving as a question mark because what's going to be interesting is whether this right shoulder completes or not. I don't know if it's going to complete, but uh, what, what's going to give us a clue is if we get a higher trough here. Okay, so if we get a higher trough and get some sort of movement up here, well, that would be very surprising to me, but uh, it would be also quite definitive because then what we are getting is a change in the, in the trend. So right now, uh, it looks as if there is a topping pattern in the dollar. Um, we still got to see if this topping pattern is going to complete. Is it is it a head and shoulders? No, it's a potential head and shoulders. It hasn't completed yet. We don't know until it completes. So this is something that um, is worth keeping an eye on. It's bumped from zone three into zone two. Now, if it bumps back down from zone two back into zone three, then we start moving back towards a potential neckline here. Okay, and if we start moving towards that potential neckline, then we are uh, moving away from a safe haven. Well, if we move away from a safe haven, well, then it's risk on. And if it's well risk on, well, then straight away NASDAQ 100 becomes something that we can take a look at, okay, which we've been looking at uh, for quite some time now. Look at this trough peak, higher trough, higher peak, higher trough. We can take this uh, question mark out. Okay, we can make that a definitive higher trough. We can actually add in a next a next higher peak. Okay, so the uptrend in uh, Nasdaq, terrific. Take a look at the RSR, nicely above 50, isn't it? So um, still, so the supply cuts here have sort of rattled the market. But I wouldn't say it's uh, a, a, an outright headwind just yet. It's something for us to keep an eye on uh, because if it um, is something that is uh, more serious, it would contribute to inflation. If it contributes to inflation, okay, well then uh, we might see an emphasis moving back towards the uh, that rate tightening cycle. We've seen a lot of pressure come off that rate tightening cycle, and that's uh, and markets are forward looking because that pressure has been lifted. Well, that's pushed the risk markets forward, right? Uh, let's take a look at Euro and DAX. All right, here is Euro. So we put uh, 110 and 115 as um, key levels. Uh, we're pretty close to 110. We're right now at 108 spot, uh, uh, 1.0813, I beg your pardon. And um, the idea here is that uh, we are, let's put in some peaks and troughs. So if we put in a trough over here, and where's the, where's the peak? Well, the peak would be, we've actually got a peak here. Strictly speaking, uh, we can put in a higher trough here. We can put in a higher peak here. 
and we can just follow this pattern. Um, we could put a higher peak here. We can put the uh, higher trough here. The next higher peak here, and just bear with me one moment, we can put in a higher trough here. And now the question is, now the question is, are we going to get another higher peak? It has to take out the 110, go back to US dollar. Okay, if we complete the topping pattern on the US dollar, then I think that um, it would be safe to say that it's quite likely we take out the 110 and start moving towards 115. The ECB is much more hawkish at the moment than the uh, than the Fed. So on a fundamental basis, that does make that does make a certain sense of sense. Uh, the Nasdaq Tech Mini Rally is due to antici anticipation of bearish rate slowdown of Fed hikes. Um, yeah, so that's from Anthony. Uh, it's a good question. So the way perhaps we can look at that, Anthony, is as follows. So what we can take a, take a look at is uh, the US two-year. Let's bring uh, NASDAQ underneath us. Okay, and then what we can do is we can just throw in a correlation coefficient. Uh, let's just make this NASDAQ 100. And the relationship between interest rates uh, becomes quite interesting. Let's go to a higher time frame. Let's go through to the weekly. And uh, from about... So this, this area here gets a bit... Uh, it's a bit tough because this is artificially held low. This is quantitative easing. Um, we, we kind of get to the end of quantitative easing, start moving into the tightening cycle. And um, as the rate moves up, uh, so the NASDAQ has moved down. Now, as you say, in anticipation, right, in anticipation, so maybe from about there, okay. We start getting the start getting the uptrend in Nasdaq. We start uh, getting the push down in the two-year yield. But we could also take a look at this in terms of the real rate. Which which perhaps is even better because uh, we're looking at ten years here as opposed to two years. Let's do that. And you can see that the correlation coefficient here is uh, pretty strongly inverse. So uh, interest rates are definitely um, definitely an influence here on the on the Nasdaq, and we can take a look at that in terms of time value of money as well. So there's a number of ways that we can take a look at that. Um, look, I would definitely agree with that. Um, let's take a look at the DAX just to um, uh, before we go to the DAX, let's just end off Euro US dollar. Let's go through to uh, the daily. Um, so this looks quite interesting, guys. Uh, we've got a movement up here in zone one. Take a look where the stochastic is. Stochastic's just moved into upper quintile. If it holds that upper quintile, okay, then we might see some movement up here. What does it depend on? Go back to your US dollar. Okay, go back to your US dollar. Okay, and see if the US dollar slips back into zone three. Okay, so there, there's the correlation there. Uh, let's just bring up uh, DAX. DAX is a terrific looking chart. Uh, right from the uh, weekly, which we've looked at, um, let's take this out um, in a fair amount of detail. Uh, we've got the higher trough here. I think we can take the question mark out here. I think last week just was an absolute uh, rocket of a week, and uh, we got to a point here when we can probably put in a higher peak. But I'm gonna uh, let's see if we can actually high 15706 80. Uh, yeah, we can actually put in a higher peak. Yeah, 
So you can see it's got a series of higher troughs, higher peaks. It's looking uh, uh, very good indeed on a technical basis. The RSI nicely above 50, beautifully above 50. And you can see we're back now into zone one. Okay. Nicely back into zone one. So for all, all per, uh, intents and purposes, it looks at, as if we are in a risk on environment. What's the X factor? It's that gap up in oil. That gap up in oil now, it's rattled the market. We're just going to see the, the bond market hasn't reacted as such. Keep an eye on the bond market for today. See what happens there. If um, the um, the primary trend is down for oil, if that holds, well, you know, then we still, I think, um, perhaps batting on a, a pretty good wicket here. And the idea is um, zone one. Upper quintile, go through to the go through to the hourly chart here, and what we can t keep an eye on now, you can see we've got support at the central pivot. Uh, there is polarity here. You can see polarity, resistance turns support. Okay. We want to see we've got a potential signal one, but we don't have signal two yet. So we want to see if we get signal one, signal two. But just take a look. Uh, the swing, yeah, what a, what a terrific swing. What a terrific swing. Okay, so we want to just keep an eye on that. All right, are there any, any final questions? I think we can wrap up over here. If there's any questions, please go ahead and uh, type those in. All right. Nothing coming through. Let's wrap up here then, guys. Thank you very much for joining. Have a good day, a good evening ahead, and please join me again tomorrow uh, when we will uh, do it all again. Thanks very much, guys.